Um, I hope you guys are doing all right. Um, if there's any immediate issues, uh, let me know. Um, but um, your quiz will go out there this afternoon. And it's kind of a combination of, uh, of um, the past couple chapters there. The only difference there for the quiz that's going to go out there this afternoon, it's not going to be a multiple choice. Uh, it's, it's not long. Um, it's only two pages. And uh, I think there's like maybe eight or nine questions. And uh, yeah, I'm going to look for you guys to do some work and uh, take pictures okay. and upload those. So something a little different and uh, yeah, but next week is your final test four and I'm just, in the, I, I've got it uh, already ready to go, but I'm just going to clean it up. But uh, I hear you, Nicole. I know you guys have done great and uh, you know, it's, um, uh, I don't know how to say this there. I've known you guys there for a semester and uh um, I wish you guys the best. You guys are about to enter, if you're not already there, having the time of uh, the best time of your life and the most exciting. And uh, get ready there for life to be a roller coaster. And sometimes, you know, as much as you plan, you, you just got to go with the ride. And uh, just make sure to have fun. Um, you guys have another week. Well, I guess what? Today is Tuesday. So. I assume you guys will have exams afterwards uh, next week. So you got basically 11 days. So just keep at it. And uh, yeah, yeah, I see that, Joanna. Yeah, yeah, the the test. Um, you guys have been doing there the assignment. And uh, the assignment there was only on electricity. And um, that's basically the only formulas there. Uh, we had one or two formulas, I think, there, maybe even one um, last week there with the, uh, uh, remember the radiocarbon dating, uh, how much uh, uh, with half-life and that kind of thing. If I started off with five grams and depending upon the half-life, how many half-lives would I have, uh, how, many, how many grams would I have at the end of three half-lives or something like that, right? But um there really isn't any mathematics there for this, um, for light, and um, uh, that's what we're going to be doing there today, doing a bit of mirrors and uh, lenses and stuff like that. But um, I think you guys are doing great. If there's any emergencies, it's not an emergency yet. If you contact me there today, there's still time there to reinvent the wheel, okay? Um, but if you, um, if there's any issues or anything there, you, even if you anticipate a problem there for next week, let me know because it's all just about preparing because of the complete absurdness and uncertainty of our current lives right now. Like, uh, I wanted there to have like a three hour test. Uh, but I don't know if I can do that now because uh, we just got the word there that uh, schools are going to be closed. So people are going to have uh, kids at home. And uh, so I'll make some modifications there to the test. You guys will have a lot of time. So don't worry about that. Um, the test will be kind of the same thing. Uh, there'll be true and false. There'll be matching. Ugh. Matching. And... Uh, I'm still going to, a couple of people have asked me there, uh, there, my, there was issues there with matching there for the last test, even though there shouldn't have been because it was the second test with matching, but that's all right. I'm going to have a look at those there. So hopefully there by tomorrow, all the, that will be cleared up there from the last test. Uh, there was only a couple anyway that sent, um, but uh, everything kind of looks like it's in order. The test there next week, well, there's not going to be any surprises. Okay, um, there'll be multiple choice, there'll be true and false, there'll be matching, uh, you'll need a calculator, you need a periodic table, maybe, uh, but I'll supply everything there and any formulas there you need. Um, I don't really see any issues, but uh, hopefully there you guys will let me know. Um, for the lab, I've got a couple emails there from the lab, and uh, it's 
don't go don't go too elaborate okay i'm not looking for some immense experiment there with five thousand dollars worth of, of equipment and this and that nah keep it easy all right find uh find an aspect of the course there that you liked and find a video find something find some information find an experiment somewhere keep it easy that kind of represents the idea of what you originally thought and do a bit of introduction on it give me a little bit of uh, discussion on it applications there for society if any any ramifications formula examples these kinds of things um, I did say I'm going to some people have already done videos um, I'm in the process right now of testing a link that can be uploaded a non Georgian college um, uh, use a G Drive and we'll see if this works and uh, if anybody uh, just the problem is there with blackboard I don't know I contacted my blackboard guy and he still hasn't got back to me yet and I'm um, can you do so hopefully there um, everything will be all right if you've done a video I've got a person doing a test there for the link <clears throat> and once that link is uh, okayed then I'll send it all out there and if you do do a video you can uh, you can do a PowerPoint, you can upload it. I'm pretty easy if you don't know me by now. Then, um, yeah. Sorry, I have a question about the assignment. Um, are we okay to work in pairs or is it supposed to be done independently? The assignment? Sorry, the lab. The lab? <clears throat> oh, yeah. The lab, uh, I think it says on there, groups. Uh, you can have group of two. Um, okay. I don't know how you'd coordinate it. If one person's in uh, Wingham and another person's in Scarborough, I have no idea. But uh, I believe in all of you guys and uh, have some fun with this. Don't stress yourselves out. Like, I don't know if your kidney lab is due right now or if due next week or whatever. But, you know, you guys have a lot of things on the go. And don't look at everything in its totality. Make a list and a list of priority. Which ones do first, second, third, and start cracking them off that way. And if there's any issues, I'm pretty flexible. So you guys just uh, let me know and uh, we'll get things done. Uh, good question. Uh, that's for the lab. The quiz goes out. The assignment there uh, is due there. Um, so if there's any issues, just keep me in the loop. But there shouldn't be any surprises there for next week's test. It's not a final, final, final because that's the way I like this course is we have four finals. And so this one here is only worth 12%. And I know you're thinking, okay, only 12%. But really, it's not that bad. So um, the class average, I think, is 80. You guys are banging this out. So keep on it and do not stop. Stay focused there for another week, get it done, and then kick off for the whole summer, okay? <clears throat> um, if there's anything else, if there's any emergencies there that need to be discussed right now, let me know. If not, uh, there'll be a Q&A afterwards, and if anyone's having any trouble there with the lab, I know some people there, oh, they're having difficulty trying to find uh, something, so contact me let me know after the class here today and we'll get you uh, going because you guys still have a week to do it but don't let these things slide because the lab is due the night before your physics exam test okay and i don't want things to be competing or worlds colliding kind of a thing so um if you can kick this thing off there early and uh scratch it off the list okay uh yeah if you got nothing i got nothing Let's go. And here we go. <clears throat> Light and optics. And, you know, again, I say this there every week, you can do a PhD on every single slide. And I think PhDs have been done on every single slide that I'm going to show you. We're just kind of skimming the surface there to give you guys an understanding, okay? Uh, we're going to go into a bit of the eyes and see how the eyes work because this is pre-health, 
okay? Um, I promise you there that all of this, if not most of this, will kind of make sense there towards the end. And I know this looks pretty crazy here, but it's not too bad, okay? So, the human eye, which you'll see up here, okay? There's your cornea, which is outside. Let's call it the lens. You got the pupil in here, okay? And here we have, and you'll see there that light will come in, and it's got to hit back here. And the problem is, is when the lens isn't focusing the light properly. And we'll show you their uh, good scenarios and bad scenarios and what glasses or contacts can do and all this kind of stuff. Um, so there's farsightedness. And this is the one I wanted. I'm going to flip these around. Okay. So what we got here now, nearsightedness and farsightedness. These are the two most common types of, I'm just trying to think of this there, improper focusing. And it can cause vision troubles. Okay. And like people who are nearsighted is farsighted. They suffer from these. You'll see people squinting, right? And trying to read a sign that's far away or something like this. Me personally, um, nearsighted. Okay. And this occurs when close objects are in focus, but distance objects are not. So someone who is nearsighted, they can see stuff that's close to them, but things at a distance, 20 meters or whatever, a roadside while they're driving, that's the issue. And you'll see here of what's going on. And you see, here's the lens here. There's the cornea. And when... You're going to see this all day long. And when in this particular, you'll see this there in questions as well. All this arrow means it's just representing some object. Could be a gummy bear or, uh, I don't know, um, a tape measure. Could be anything. It's just this high. And you're, we're going to see these arrows coming off of it. And all these arrows are light rays because I don't know if you guys know this or not. We don't actually see anything. And now what I mean by that is that we only see reflections of things. Like you turn the lights off, the whole room goes dark. You can't see anything. Why not? Because there's no light source hitting the chair that you know is there. And then the light reflects off the chair and into your eye. That's how we see. We're not actually seeing the chair. We see a reflection of the chair. You can kind of get it, right? And that's what we're talking about. We're talking about light rays. And you see these arrows here. These represent light rays, okay? And the light is going to, there's lots of photons traveling. And you see, this one here represents kind of the top of the image. And this one here also represents the top. And you see here, now you get two different light rays. Very simplified, but that's the whole point. And these light rays come in. And we'll show you there how, it's called refraction, and you'll see there that the light bends. And it comes through to the back of the eye, okay? And you'll see here that these light rays do not meet. That's a problem, okay? And that, um, this is what happens here. When the rays do not reach the retina, the back of the eye, the object will appear out of focus. And see what we do is here, we'll use um, um, a diverging lens, okay? And what happens is the same light is coming through, 
but what happens is it augments the light, it changes the light. So as it now enters the eye, it's at a certain degree now that even though the eye is defective in some capacity, this lens now makes an adjustment so that when the light does enter the eye, it now enters at a certain angle there that even though that there's an issue, the light meets at the back there of the retina and now you're able to see. That's how, that's how glasses or contact lenses work. Okay, They don't actually fix the problem. They go in front of the eye and change the light so that when it enters the eye, the problem eye, okay, we can see. Um, what do we got here now? Sorry, I missed something here at the bottom. The corrective lens is either held in place by a frame, glasses, or contact lens. That's what I... Perfect. Uh, if you see here, farsightedness, which is the opposite. And please note, myopia for nearsighted and hyperopia. Okay, for farsightedness. So in this particular case, distant objects are okay. But it's reading, things that are close, you know, trying to read a soup can or whatever, you know. And uh, my mom, she's, uh, she's farsighted. She can't read. She's got to have her reading glasses on, right? She's got like 50 of them, those $2 glasses there from the dollar store. And uh, again, it's the same thing, but a different situation. Uh, the rays reach the retina before they meet. And you'll see what's going on here now. There's your object. There's your light. Travels through. And you see they do not meet. They actually meet way back here, which is an impossibility. And please notice, real rays are straight lines. False rays are dotted. We'll get there. Uh, I know none of this is making sense right now. The eye is making sense, but we'll get to more light rays. You guys will be masters at it by the end of today. And you see by wearing a um, what's called a converging lens, it's different than this one here, which we'll get into. There's only two types. We'll show you these, okay? And you'll see there that it brings the light rays back and allows them there to meet at the retina. So therefore, now this problem is fixed. Okay, so we've got... Nearsightedness, farsightedness, a great question would be, I show you an, an example of this, you tell me if it's nearsightedness or farsightedness, that kind of a thing. But again, the test is open book, so rock and roll. Um, optics there is the study of light and its interaction with matter. Okay, uh, light is a very strange thing. It... Uh, we, it travels in bundles called photons. Uh, it's weird because it acts like it has mass, but it doesn't. If something has mass, then that means it occupies space. Volume, mass, density, then now you have this, right? But light doesn't work like that. It's a weird one. But uh, And you'll see there, like uh, we were walking along, uh, taking the kids out for a walk there yesterday, and there was a puddle because it was raining. And there was some gasoline in it. And we were just going through and, you know, you see the rainbow effect. Okay, dispersion. We'll talk about that there later. But the uh, same thing kind of works there with soap bubbles. You'll see this kind of a rainbow effect on a, on a soap bubble. Okay. Um, it's just colored by interference of the light reflecting off the front and back. And uh, But we'll go through all this there today. It's actually a pretty interesting... Um, yeah, really interesting stuff. <laughs> light uh, used to be synonymous with God, thought that light was uh, uh, light in church, meant that God was present. Um, you've got some interesting, uh, interesting things that have happened there in the 1600s. Uh, artists began to incorporate shadow into the art. You also have alchemy beginning, um, the start of science, and uh, this is where... A lot of scientific thoughts first was just developing, right? And um, the biggest art, uh, the biggest argument of the uh, of them all, is light wave or a particle. Wave just meaning energy, right? EMG, electromagnetic spectrum there, 
or is it a particle has mass? So the um, there's still lots of things uh, out there. Okay, um, you'll see there that when we're dealing with light, and we've co we've covered this already, but I'll go through it there. Uh, generally, uh, wavelength is expressed in nanometers. Okay, 10 to the negative 9 meters. Okay, uh, 1 times 10 to the negative 9. And just an example here, wavelength of visible light uh, is about 750 nanometers to 400 nanometers. Okay, remember Roy G. Biv, red, orange, yellow, blue, green, blue, indigo, violet. Okay where red is about 750 nanometers and as you go down there towards blue and indigo and violet you're going in the same direction as x-rays and gamma rays so the wavelengths are getting smaller and smaller and smaller okay why do we see color original belief colors were created by an object newton uh, is using a prism there showed that white light can be separated into colors and we'll get into this whole idea of what is happening there, why rainbows form, uh, these kinds of things. And uh, you could just uh, imagine the, uh, you know, early humankind, 100,000 years ago, half a million years ago, you know, and they first saw a rainbow. You could just imagine what they were thinking. That's why they're special things. And we'll, uh, we'll take five or ten minutes and we'll talk about those as well. And... Um, here are your wavelengths. As we just said there, red is about 7.5 nanometers there, and violet's about 4. You guys can have a look at those. Light and color. Keep in mind that we perceive different frequencies of light as different color. So basically what we're saying there is what is red to me may not be red to you because color is all perception how you perceive it and uh, you know your mom or your dad when you were three years old this is red okay so now you've got this idea of what red is but maybe there's an someone else at five years old was introduced to a red that's kind of pinky red so you know it's a, it's a relative thing uh, what we actually see is the wavelength of the light that are being reflected back now what do I mean no, I'll show you. It's okay, I didn't need that anyway. You see, this is a blue folder. Well, is it really blue? Kind of, yeah, I call it blue. And you see, what's going on here is light all over the place. Light's coming from inside, outside, all over the place. Light is, I'm just being bombarded by photons. And so is this. Why is this blue? because the blue wavelength is being reflected back into my eye. All the other colors are being absorbed, okay? But we'll get into more of this there, just throwing things at you here and hoping, hoping some of them stick. Please note there that white light is a combination of all the visible spe uh, spectrum, which is why we are able there to do this, okay? Um, yeah, so just going through here, we're going to go back into the eye. Here's your retina, and you'll see there's your lens ray here. There's your cornea, your pupil, okay, and your optic nerve, all right? And you see there, again, you'll see how light is being represented there by these lines with arrows, okay? And you'll see there that the light comes in through the aperture, all right, gets bent, and you'll see that proper vision, all the light gets directed back to the retina where it's picked up by the optic nerve and taken to the brain there to be interpreted as an image. All right. So this is what we're talking about here. This is a good little uh, schematic. You'll need to know this for where you're going anyway. So this is a good one there, lens, pupil, cornea, retina, optic nerve, love it. And you'll see there that what I've done, there really isn't, I didn't put any questions because there really isn't. 
there's more like for this topic for sure there really isn't any mathematics per se so what I've gone through is I just picked out words that I thought were important is this the complete list no but uh, we're going to talk about nanometers, rods, cones, incident ray, reflected ray, law of refle uh, re reflection. Say that five times. Angle of incident, angle of reflection, the normal. Good one. Specular as opposed to diffuse reflection. Concave mirror, concave, uh, convex. Okay. Uh, we've also got lenses in there as well. Focal length, focal point. But there's these here more definition based and that's what this part of the um of the test will be and you'll see there that the quiz there that i'll release there this afternoon again it's not multiple choice i'm looking for you guys to draw a little schematics this and that and show me uh that way and it's just two pages it shouldn't take you very long at all i hope and you just take pictures and shoot them up to uh, upload them there to uh blackboard okay so that's for quiz four that'll be released there this afternoon. Um, we're going to get into uh, specular reflection. I'm just going to, the first part of this, I'm just going to kind of throw words at you. That's all this is, words and ideas. So here we're talking about a flat mirror. Okay. And why, why do light rays strike our eyes? Okay. The light hits the mirror bounces off the mirror and you'll notice there that there's you see this angle see this angle and see this angle this one here we call the normal and it's 90 degrees okay from the plane of the mirror and uh, light hits the mirror you know uh, let's say uh, the light hits my big toe and then hits the mirror and you'll see that we call this the incident ray, the incoming ray. And then it hits the mirror and gets reflected out. This is called your reflecting ray, okay, or outgoing. We're going to build upon that right now with the law of reflection. And you'll see there that the incident and reflecting ray within them there, there are two angles. There's the angle of incidence, which is theta one, which is equal to the angle of reflection, which is theta two, these guys in here, okay? So these guys here, these are your two angles that we are interested in. Now, on a testing situation or whatever, don't think of these, we're not looking at these angles here, we're looking at the inside angles closest to the normal. Now, what do I mean normal? That's just the 50-50 line, okay? That whatever comes in on this side will leave on the other side in exactly the same angle, fashion, everything, okay? So there's your angle of incidence, angle of reflection, and it's all based on the uh, incident ray and the reflected ray, okay? Um angles are between uh, the normal so this is not real this is something there that we put in there to divide this thing into 50 50 to break it down and to further analyze it okay the normal ray is created by the light perpendicular to the mirror okay and I'll show you more of this all right so you have a look here this gets into why things have color and um, a white surface like this paper, okay, reflects all frequencies of light nearly uniformly. Okay, so if something is, appears white, all light is coming at you in a uniform fashion. Okay, so that's what white light means. Um, but interesting enough, if you take a red light, turn the lights off, put a red light onto a piece of paper, white piece of paper it'll appear red uh, same with a blue light all right it'll appear blue and if you look at this there this is pretty this is uh kind of neat here a colored surface of a red car why does a car look red why does this appear blue 
because the red car is absorbing all of the light except red. And so when you see a red Ferrari drive by, it's absorbing all the light from the ev everywhere. But the only color that's being reflected off that car is the red light. So that's why that car appears red and no other color. Okay. So interesting. I like it. Diffuse reflection. Okay. Now getting back into this specular reflection it's off a nice flat smooth surface okay everything looks uniform everything looks predictable specular reflection then we also have diffuse reflection and you'll see here off of a wavy lake or you know whatever it is okay and the light strikes a surface that is not smooth and polished but is rough so the light rays reflect off random bumps and nicks in the surface, and you'll see there that everything is just mashed potatoes. Okay, that's what we call diffuse reflection. Little summary here of specular and diffuse, where uh, specular, the incident ray bounces off a smooth surface like a mirror and continues along in a straight line. Angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflection. Uh, you see the reflected light only in one direction. Okay, it's not all haphazard and running around. Diffuse occurs when the light strikes an uneven surface and scatters. So you see the reflected light in all directions. Just two little things there, okay? Plain mirrors. <clears throat> and just, I put this slide in here just to show you there about these light rays again. And how you see using a mirror. Okay, we use these light rays and do, we don't use a million light rays. We'll use like uh, one from the top, one from the bottom. Sometimes one from the middle, that's just overkill. But the whole point is you have your real object here. What's your image going to look like? And you'll see there that the light rays, let's say from the feet, they travel up here and they go to your eye, right? And with all this light here hitting the mirror and bouncing back to your eye, you'll see there that the difference, let's say you're, I don't know, one meter away from the mirror. Hypothetically, uh, I don't know another word, I'm, I'm just, just going to have a cup of coffee and think about it. But in the mirror, it's not a real thing. The person, the man in the mirror is not real. Okay, it's just an image. But if your hand is a meter away from the mirror, and if you look at the person in the mirror, their hand appears also to be one meter away. Okay, the image of an object in a plain mirror is as far behind the mirror as the object is in front of the mirror. Okay. So however far in front of the mirror I am, the person in the mirror will be exactly the same distance. Okay, And uh, you will see here that there are real rays and there are false rays. And these real rays, these ones here are all continuous straight lines. But then we'll have false rays in here that appear to be coming from the person in the mirror but they're not they're coming from you so with more again i'm just kind of throwing things at you guys here and by the end of this uh it should all be all right and also i got a great movie at the end as well um it's about 11 minute movie summarizes everything there in really clean fashion so you have a look here at cameras all right, and really expensive cameras here. They have these awesome apertures and like, I mean, mega zooms and all this kind of stuff, even with your phone nowadays. It's just unheard of what these new phones can do as far as cameras go. And you'll see here there that incoming rays, they go through the camera lens. Okay, they hit this flip mirror. Okay, and then they have a prism inside where the light gets tossed here, here, and then into the eye. 
okay? And I'm not going to go too heavy into a camera. That's as far as I'm going to go. I just thought it was interesting there just to show you guys. Uh, generally, this is how a camera is set up. And when the shutter is pressed, the mirror tilts up, allowing light to reach the film. So when you hit the button, the light comes in, hits the film, makes the image, away you go. Okay. There are some uh, one-way mirrors. You'll see them there in cop, police person uh, TV shows and this kind of thing where they have the, the suspect in the interrogation room and you have that infamous mirror on the wall that's like 15 feet long, 7 feet high. Um, yeah, I think we all know that you're behind there. And uh, it's what we call a one-way mirror, okay? Uh, where half of it is uh, got silver on it. It does allow light to come in, okay? Enough there for the people on the other side of the mirror to see you break and lie through your lie detector test, but you can't see them, okay? Because none of the light from this side can get through. That's why you can't see. I got another slide there that I'll show you. Um, how do we see? Vision is passive. Okay, the cornea and the lens focus light in our retina. We showed you guys that there from the previous diagram, okay? Uh, proteins in rods and cones, they change shape. And again, I'm not going to go too heavy into this kind of stuff. But what I'm looking there for is more rods and cones, uh, cornea, just general knowledge there and how the eye works because you might see a question or two on that. Guaranteed. Okay. Um, rods are for low light peripheral vision. Cones are for color vision. Okay. And more light there. And you know what I mean? Just a true or false. I could say that rods are for color vision, high acuity and more light. And you would put false. That kind of thing. Uh, triggers action potential in the opti opti optic nerve. That's all this is, right? The light comes in there, your optic nerve. It's quite an amazing thing. You take light and then changes it into chemical energy, which then gets transported there to the brain and your brain interprets it. Quite uh, incredible. If I'm going too fast or too slow, or if you guys have any questions, you guys know the routine, please feel free. Um, you guys have all seen this phenomenon. Okay, just the whole idea, you put a pencil or a fork or a spoon or something into a glass of water and something is going on here. Okay, and we'll talk about that. This is called refraction. And when light travels through a medium, okay, it's traveling at a certain speed. All right. Of course, it'll travel travel faster in a vacuum space. Okay, but then light can travel in air and water and all these different kinds of things. And if you see here, um, light is passing through the air, and then it hits the water. And you see this light ray here is perfectly perpendicular to the surface medium or the medium of the sur surface medium. Yeah. All right, and we have a boundary. Here's your air, here's your water, and you have this boundary where they meet, okay? And so you look here, light is traveling fast here in the air, and then wham, it hits a brick wall, which is water. And it travels slower now, okay? It's a completely different banana. And, but because this particular light ray that I'm showing you right here is hitting the water dead on, 90 degrees perpendicular, chum, nothing's changing here, okay? But you have a look here. When light is moving uh, in at an angle, all right, what happens now, the light... Is traveling here at the same speed, but then it hits the boundary at this angle. And it's kind of like the same thing as when, I don't know if any of you guys have ever driven, yeah, you've driven on a highway and, um, you know, there's a, a gravel dirt shoulder. And 
maybe, I don't know, you're brushing your teeth while you're driving or whatever, something happens for a fraction of a second, you're not paying attention, and your two right wheels kind of, you know, shimmy over and they're on the gravel. You'll know this there that that's a very, very, very dangerous situation because you're traveling at 100 kilometers an hour. But now you've got two tires on a different medium than your left tires. Your left tires are still going 100 kilometers an hour. Your right tires, because they're on gravel, it's going to be more difficult, so they slow down. So you see what happens here? You actually get, if both of your right-hand tires hit the gravel, it actually starts to pull your car over into the gravel. It's a crazy dangerous situation. And it's exactly the same thing as what's going on here. Light is traveling on the, on the highway. It's going super fast in the air. Okay. And you'll see here that air has what we call an index of refraction. This is all according to Snell's law. Okay. It's in your textbook there. Okay. I'm not going to harp on it too much. But this index of refraction means that it's telling you a number magnitude quantity of what's going on there in relation there to the light traveling. So air is the easiest medium here on Earth for light to travel through. All right. It's got an index of one. And anything above one is telling you there that now this is a more dense medium. It's not going to be as easy for light to travel through. And you'll see here, if air is 1, water is 1.33. Okay, it's a bigger number than 1. It's not immensely greater than uh, air. But what it is, it's big enough there that it's going to slow that light down immediately. And you see here that the light is traveling, and right here, wham. Those two tires, they hit the side of the road, and you'll see that instead of the light traveling straight like it would if it was traveling in air, it bends towards the normal. Okay? It's exactly the same principle as those two tires hitting the gravel doing 100. It's going to pull your car over. It does the same thing to light. Okay? So from traveling. And you'll see here for glass. Glass is even. It slows down light even more. And it has a number of 1.5. So let's say that this was glass and air. It would come in at the same angle. And glass being 1.5, it would even bend, slow down even more. And bend towards the normal even more than that one. Okay, so when you're going from a lighter medium to a heavier medium, the light is going to bend towards the normal. Let me say that again. When light is traveling from a lighter medium, like air, to a heavier medium, more denser medium, like water, the light is going to come in at an angle and it's going to bend towards the normal. It's going to refract. And it's this that causes this. That's what's going on here. Okay? So, we just talked about Snell's Law, which is this index of refraction. Every medium has been given a number. I'm not asking you to remember numbers. I'm not asking... But I am asking you there to understand the principle of what these numbers mean. If I give you an, uh, uh, an index of refraction of 1 and an index of refraction there for 1.5, I would expect you to know that the 1.5 is a, has a greater uh, index of refraction and it will bend towards the normal. Okay? And here's the just that idea of the... Um, the uh, if you couldn't see it there before, you're traveling along at 100 kilometers an hour on the pavement, and then all of a sudden there, I don't know, you drop something and you go and pick it up, and then your these two tires here are in the gravel in the ditch. Okay, these two, this half of your car, these two tires are still going 100. You've now dropped down to 60. Okay, and it's a very dangerous situation there. You could flip the car. 
instantaneously. And that's kind of the same principle as what goes on there from air, uh, from light traveling from air into water or air into glass, these kinds of things, is that that light just takes a turn. All right. You'll, um, and here we talk about there the index of refraction. Okay. It's just kind of the same thing. Your index of refraction is one for air, for water is 1.33. And so your angle of incidence, okay, is actually greater than your angle of refraction. Okay, see that? Angle of incidence, okay? And the whole reason is because we are dealing with two different mediums and they will augment or change light uh, traveling through it, okay? And you'll see there the air. Here's your angle of incidence here, theta 1. And because this light gets bent towards the normal, because this has a um, an index there of 1.33, there is your angle of refraction. And you'll see there that it's smaller. All right. Now, we've been talking about light going from a lighter medium to a heavier medium. We can talk about the reverse. And you see there that light coming from air into water, okay, it's going to bend towards the normal. Well, what about light coming from water to air? It's going to do the opposite. It's going to bend away from the normal, okay? But when I got a slide there, I'll show you that. So the law of refraction a light ray is bent towards the normal when it enters a transparent medium where the light travels more slowly. Makes sense, doesn't it? Air to water, light is going to have a tough time with water, so it's going to bend there towards the normal. It is bent away from the normal when the opposite happens, when light is coming from a heavier medium to a lighter medium. It'll bend away from the normal. And here we've got this one right here. Okay, so light is coming out of the water. You have a light bulb there at the bottom of the pool. And light is coming out at this particular angle. Okay, so there's your angle of incidence. Here's your normal. And you'll see there that instead of the light traveling through like it would normally, straight up, it bends away from the normal. So that's where the light is going to come out. Okay. Any issues with that, just let me know. If you have any questions. Um, why do objects there seem closer in the water? Light is reflected from objects in water and refracted as the rays pass from water to air. If rays in air are extended backwards, we see... Like the, here, we've got a coin. All right? And if we look at a coin there through the water, it actually looks bigger than what it actually is. And you don't have to have a coin in the swimming pool. You could just have a coin in a dish with water and two centimeters down. And you've got light coming from the coin, coming up through the water, and then the light rays bend away from the normal, right? Because water's heavier, water's more dense. So light comes up through the water, bends away from the normal when it comes into the air, so now your coin actually looks bigger. Okay, interesting little thing. Dispersion. All I'm looking there for for this uh, for the next couple slides here is just understanding. Right, um, refers to the separation of light into its component colors. Roy G Biv, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. Uh, this occurs uh, because different wavelengths of light have slightly different um, index of refraction and therefore can be separated. Uh, each wavelength of light moves through a medium at a little different speed because they're all different wavelengths, right? And they'll all have different speeds because they're different wavelengths, slightly, okay? And you'll see here that red moves through the glass at a speed of 1.97 times 10 to the 8 meters per second, while violet moves at a speed of 1.95. Just a tad slower. All right, so it can be broken up. This is what dispersion is. 
uh, and it's all from white light and you'll see here comes in there's your normal and breaks it up Roy G Biv um, responsible for rainbows of course and instead of a prism there it's uh, water droplets might actually be pieces of ice because that's how rain starts right it's uh, ice crystals there um, the uh, with a little piece of dirt in it from what I understand um, the water droplets there they disperse the light total internal reflection of dispersed color rays uh, red is always on the outside violet is always on the other side so really not too much to know there I'm just looking there for a bit of understanding of uh, diversion uh, sorry dispersion that's all I'm looking for there um, now we're into the probably the main part of this we've done a bit of background you guys know your uh, uh, your uh, angle of incidence, your angle of refraction, these kinds of things. Now we're going to apply this all to mirrors and lenses. Okay. And uh, I don't want you guys to get freaked out about this. I've actually got a website there that kind of takes care of everything. And uh, I'll show you guys all this. You guys will be laughing by the end of, end of the lecture. Um, just the whole idea there, reflection with two mirrors. Uh, if you place two mirrors at 90 degrees to one another, okay, a light ray there coming from my ear hits here, bounces here, and we see an image here, here, and here. You will see three images. And we're going to, it's going to be interesting, we're going to talk about real images and false images. <clears throat> Let's have some fun. There are plain mirrors and there are cur curved mirrors. And if you guys have ever been to a carnival there and gone into the mirror house there, um, depending upon the mirror, I've added 60 pounds and dropped 60 pounds in a matter of seconds just because of the mirrors. And uh, But we'll talk a little bit about plain mirrors and then we'll get into curved mirrors. Okay. You'll remember there, uh, Jurassic Park objects uh, in mirror up here closer than they are right and we're going to get into convex and concave mirrors and lenses as well we've kind of seen a slide like this um there earlier most mirrors are plain flat mirrors okay almost perfect reflection of the light and i mean okay that's the whole point right and the distance there from the foot to the mirror is exactly the same as the foot there to here as it appears with the eye everything is the same and you will see I'll blow up a little bit here not too far and again this is your real person and you'll see there that the light and whatever light source is over here right the light hits your toe and reflects off your toe to the mirror so that's how when you're standing in front of a mirror and you're looking at the mirror you can see your toes because light is hitting your toes reflecting off your toes hitting the mirror and coming right into your eye all right reflectors there um when we're talking about mirrors uh they can be curved and I'll go into more detail on this. Uh, I'm just kind of right now, I'm throwing words at you right now uh, in a couple slides there. We'll tie it all in together. But there, we're going to deal with something called a focal point. And mirrors will, uh, curved mirrors, they have what's called a focal point. When we're dealing with curved mirrors, there's going to be a lot of parallel and then lines that will go through the focal point and I'll show you these there like if you have a curved mirror all right if we if we had a circular a sphere mirror there would be a center to it okay that's the center of the circle and halfway between that um, we have what's called the focal point and this is a point a hypothetical theoretical point that I couldn't put my finger on because it 
there's nothing tangible about it. But if we fire light rays at the at the um, the inside there of this concave mirror, all right, all of the light will go through this point. And to take an example that's not really an example of a mirror, I don't know if you've ever taken a magnifying glass and you know what I mean, you've got the sunlight coming through it and what happens is the sunlight will go through the lens and then it refracts through the lens and at some point all of the light coming through the magnifying glass converges on a single point. And if that single point is combustible like a piece of wood, you can actually start a fire with that. Okay, so that is your what we call the focal point. Okay. The when we're talking about a, a, a mirror surface, even if it's curved, the law of reflection still holds. Okay. And you'll see there that your angle of incidence will still equal your angle of reflection. And don't forget about your normal, okay? Because that's how we tell what's going on here, okay? So if a normal line is drawn at each point, okay, as down below, the angle of incidence will always equal the angle of reflection because this is a flat surface. Even a curved mirror is still a flat surface at a molecular level okay um, a concave mirror was there a question no now there's convex and concave mirrors concave is just a cave think of a cave cave has a hole in it okay so this is an example of a concave mirror all right convex mirror is you're standing on the other side and it's bent like this and I'll show you guys there but a concave mirror think C think uh, cave all right so the object is in here the light is bouncing here and coming back out here okay um, what happens here is generally the image is magnified okay so here we have a concave mirror all right and uh, like uh, makeup tables, shaving mirrors, as the PowerPoint uh, says right here. And it's just the whole point is to make the image larger so that we can see close up when we're shaving or whatever. Okay. So this is what we're looking at here. Uh, convex mirror. Okay. Here we've got a normal flat mirror. Okay. I'm just trying to think of what character this is. Doonesbury or something but and what we've got here now is a convex mirror and convex mirror is rounded out I get there's your concave right and your image is here and light rays are bouncing here and you get your image here convex is you're on the other side and it's rounded this way and what happens here is the image is reduced. And I'll, I'll, I go into more detail of this in a couple slides, all right? But convex mirrors are curved outward, all right? And the image is reduced, as you can see it is right here, okay? Advantages, we use convex uh, mirrors all the time. There's one there at the local CIBC there on the corner of uh, Cundles and Bayfield Street here in Barrie. Um, they'll use these. Um, they're really not very safe, especially if they're not cleaned off, but um, they'll have it around a tight corner The when there's only you know around a back alley or something there. So people who are driving too fast, you can see this mirror and you can actually see around the corner to see if there's a car coming. And if you have a look here, um, let's say you wanted to see your field of view. Okay. So here's your field of view with a uh, plain old mirror. Okay. And that's what you can see with a plain old mirror. Okay. But those security cameras there that you'll, uh, little black things, I don't know, you'll see at Zares or wherever, right? Or catching people there for stealing. They're all this kind, this convex all right, because 
you see there that because it's rounded on the outside, now we can have a greater field of view. Okay, that's how these are. So now we're going to break these down and we're going to do a bit of schematics. And you'll need to um, you'll need to try these out there for your quiz that's coming up, but they're not bad. Um, once we go through the video, I'll post it there to YouTube, and there's a video there at the very end there that'll just clean everything up. It's really, really, really good. Okay, and then coupled with the uh, um, website there that I have, you guys will be laughing. So. A concave mirror is a mirror that is reflected, uh, has its reflective surface on the inside. And you'll see here that there's the center of the circle. All right, if there was a full sphere here, all right. And then we've got our focal point. So there's a straight line between the source and the image, okay. I call it the normal. Some people, uh, some other, your, uh, uh, I think your textbook there calls it the normal as well. Uh, this PowerPoint there is called there the optic axis. This will be your normal line, okay, wherever your object is. The uh, focal point, okay, this is where the uh, image forms. It's uh, half the radius of the circle. So there's your center, okay, and this is your radius and your focal point is halfway in between, okay, the edge and the center, okay. So, focal length, focus point to the mirror. So there's three things there, center, focal point, focal length. Let's see what we can do with this now. What we're talking about here is again, you're going to see these light rays. You've seen them all. What I want you guys to deal with here is you're going to have parallel rays and then rays that will go through the focal point. That's how these work. And you'll notice there my focal length. Um, getting back into, I kind of uh, illuminated. Illuminated. Boy, that was funny. Um, about real images and virtual false images. And you're going to hear me talk about these there in the next 10 or 15 slides. All right. A real image is rays of light that are actually producing an image. Okay. And they're coming at you. And you could hold up a piece of paper. And on that piece of paper, you would see the flower or whatever it is, the image there you're, uh, you're hoping to see. It's a real image on a piece of paper. There are also virtual images that we can see. It just you can't reproduce them on a piece of paper. And uh, rays of light that do not pass, okay, and converge together. So if these light rays do not converge together at a certain particular point, then you do not get what's called a real image. You get what's called a virtual image. And it's an image that exists on the mirror at a particular, as you're, as you're looking at it, but as soon as you move away from it, it's gone. And you can't, there's no light rays coming to it, so you can't put a piece of paper up and see that flower. Probably doesn't make any sense. We'll come, I'll show you guys, I have some good pictures there. So just real image and a false image. We'll come into this. So you'll see here what I'm doing, okay? We've got concave mirror, where the image is at a certain length. Concave mirror, I've now moved the image. What's going on? And then I've got concave mirror. I've moved the image again. All right. So let's look at all these right now and see if we can try and decipher these of what's going on. Because on the uh, quiz, I give you a situation like this and I ask you to tell me, to show me where the image will be. 
How do we do that? Well, concave mirror. When the object is placed more than two times the focal length from the concave mirror. So there's your focal length. So there's another focal length. All right. So when it's more than two focal lengths from the mirror, what happens is, now again, we're going to take light rays. And let's just start with the top. We don't have to do the bottom of the uh, image. So this is our real, okay? This is real. I've just put this in front of the mirror. So here, think parallel and think focal point. That's how you do these ones. So you have a parallel line. It hits here, hits the mirror, goes through the focal point. And just, that's how you, wham, wham. And that line just goes down. That's ray one. Ray two, take it from the same spot. This one here goes directly through the focal point and bounces back parallel. So you'll notice there's parallel and parallel. And you will see that these two rays will intersect in this particular case when an object is placed more than two focal points from the mirror. Ray 1 comes down here, goes through the focal point. Ray 2 directly through the focal point, hits the mirror and comes back parallel. And you'll see there that that's my top of my image. And now we can say that the image has been inverted and it gets smaller. So this is my image right here. Okay. Um, I'll show you the excellent sim simulation in a second. Here now, if the object was placed at the focal point, there's no image because the rays never meet. And you'll see here, we're, we place this object at the focal point. You think about that. Go back to here. Both of these light rays had to go through the focal point in order to get an image. Well, I've now placed this candle or light at the focal point. So all the light is emanating out from the focal point. There's nothing there to bind them to, you know, because they're all emanating from the focal point. And you'll see there, it doesn't matter where you... All these light rays, they never touch. And all the light goes out. We use this in car headlights or any type of uh, like uh, a lighthouse light kind of a thing. All right. We place the light source at the focal point so that all the light hits the mirror and 100% of the light goes out. Okay, so that's what goes on here in this particular situation. Now, I'll show you the simulation. And it's really, really good. It's, um, I don't know, I just stumbled upon this there. And um, if you click on this link here, it should take you to right here. It should take you to this one. Okay, and this thing's got great simulations on it. Uh, I'm, I haven't had a chance there to tell my coordinator, but I think it's really good. It's only got maybe 30 or 40 sims on it, but it's really, really good. You click on this one right here. And now, hey, where did the hand go? And you see what you can do here. Let's say I, uh, you have lenses. Let's say I want to go mirror. Okay. There's your convex mirror. And if you have this image... Okay, right here, and they're kind of doing the same thing. You can move this as we're going to do. You can change the height. You can do whatever. Okay, so everything there that I'm doing on the PowerPoint, you just got to use this right here, and it'll tell you everything. And you see here we have an image just like what we did. It's more than two focal lengths away. All right, and does the same thing. And look at our image, inverted and smaller just as what we said, all right? Now, let's move the image to the focal point. 
There is no image. Okay? There is nothing there. Because the light just goes off and you see how it's parallel here and never touches. There is no image. Now, uh, at the focal point, and what do we got here? Now, this one here is going to be a little strange, all right? But you guys have your stimulation there. You guys can do anything with that, okay? What I've done now is I've moved the image to in between the focal point and the mirror, all right? So it's right in there. So, like a, like a plain mirror, your brain interprets the diverging rays as if they were coming from some point behind the mirror. All right? So you can find this point by extending the rays behind the mirror. And you see what we're doing here now. It's a bit odd, all right? But we have our image here, right? And you're thinking parallel lines and focal point. Those are the two. So you've got one light ray coming off the top of the candle. It hits the mirror. We're still dealing with concave. And then shoots there towards and through the focal point and continues on. Well, you have another light ray that comes off here and goes here. Well, they're not touching. So there's no real image. This one here, this is the very first one we did. That's a real image. If you held a piece of paper there, you'd get an image. Here, there's nothing because the light rays don't touch at all. But here, in order to get an image, now we're going to go into the mirror, so to speak. And you see your light ray that you did here. Extend it back it should go right to the very top of your image, which is on the other side. Okay? Now, how do we know where this image is? Because this line that we drew that didn't seem to do anything to anywhere, extend it back. And wherever these two fake lines meet, that is where the top of your virtual image is. Now, this is inside the mirror, right? So it's not real. You can't put a piece of paper on there. But that's how we do these ones here. So because no light rays are behind the mirror, obviously, uh, where the image seems to be, the virtual, uh, the image formed is virtual. Okay, and the image is also upright and enlarged. So um, it's quite interesting. It's interesting. So this is the one there I don't want you to get tripped up on, okay? So you're going to have, you don't have to memorize these. You guys have them, right? Just have them close by in a testing situation. But for concave mirrors, we're dealing there with an object that's more than two feet, uh, two focal uh, lengths away. There's an object here that's right at the focal point. There's an object here that was placed in between the focal point and the mirror itself. Have a look at those there, and that is your image, in this case here, if it's placed in between the focal point and the mirror, this will be your virtual. And we can go back to our thing right here. So we put it into here. And wouldn't you know it, that's where we are. And you see what they did? You have the parallel line coming down through the focal. The other one there comes down here. Well, if you extend these lines back, there's the top of your candle. There's your image. Away you go. Okay. So that, I really, I'm happy with this. Um, it's really, really good. Uh, play around with it a bit. See how it all works. You guys got it. Makes the test a lot easier. C'est bon? Good. Just a little bit here about convex mirrors. Okay. Uh, these guys here are the, uh, the, were the reflective surfaces on the outside of the curve. Okay, you'll notice there that we're not going to be dealing with, we have the same center and the same focal point, but they're on the inside, right? There's the center of your circle. Okay, there's your focal point there. All right, and I want you guys to think there that this is kind of, uh, things are going to emanate from the focal point here. 
So you have your uh, incident ray parallel, whatever your image is, parallel, and then it'll reflect off of if you extend the line down to the focal point. That's how these guys go. Okay, so the incident ray is parallel to the normal or the optic axis, and they reflect back as if they were originated from the focal point. Okay. Uh, and this example ray here, here's your candle. Okay, you have your light ray parallel, and it reflects back like it was emanating there from the, uh, the object here. We've got this guy here, it reflects back, and if you extend these two lines here, okay, that's where your image is. That's how these ones go. Uh, smaller image, okay, means bigger view, distorts the distance, okay. With those curved mirrors there, curved lenses there that they use for security cameras, you get a higher, or um, uh, you get a bigger field of view, but your ability there to judge distances has been distorted. So that's the only downside there with a convex. Um, so it's a virtual image as well here, okay? Here's a nice little summary, okay? Plane mirrors, concave mirrors, uh, objects more than two focal, um, between one and two focal lengths. We've got at the focal point, we've got inside the focal point, Here's your one um, uh, example there given there with convex mirrors. You guys can have a look at those as well. Everything there you guys need is here. All right. We can even switch this there to lenses. So we've got mirrors. All right. And we've got uh, converging lenses, which we're going to get into right now, and diverging lenses. That's it. They're not too bad. Um, lenses here, it's called a convex, and this guy here is thicker in the middle. That's how you tell. A thicker in the middle lens, okay, is what we call a convex lens. And I put this in here, not, hopefully they're not to confuse you, but if I can blow this up a little bit here. And you remember there your law of refraction, Snell's law, okay? Uh, light ray coming, uh, light coming in at an angle. Okay, and you'll see that light coming in along the normal doesn't change, it just goes straight in. But any light coming in on an angle gets refracted in to the normal if the new medium is more dense. And you'll see here, here we're moving from air into glass of some kind, right? And so all of this light gets refracted back into the lens to eventually a focal point inside the lens. And you'll see here, it's the same thing of what's going on. Light is coming in through the lens, it gets refracted, the normal doesn't change, gets refracted, and then there's a focal point over there. Okay, so that's what's going on here with a lens. Okay, with mirrors there, the light is 100%, you know, uh, reflected. But lenses, it's refracting. The light is traveling through and it's doing some funny things depending upon the medium there that it's traveling through. Okay. I've got three examples here of what goes on as far as uh, uh, we're dealing there with the convex lens. Convex lens is uh, fatter in the middle. Okay. And so here we have. Um, uh, your focal point, all right, you'll have the same thing on the other side for light traveling through the other way. So for every lens, you see here, here the light is traveling through this way and coming out, there's a focal point here. Well, if I just turn the light off and turn this thing around, I could have light coming through this way and then it would be refracting on this side and there would be a focal point on that side. Okay, so there's two focal points here, <clears throat> just depending on which way the light is coming in and which way the light is coming out. So <clears throat> here I've got an object, okay, and you're doing the same thing. A little different though. Your parallel line, 
travels from the top of the object to the lens and then goes right through the focal point. The other ray goes from the top of the object straight through. And where those two lines meet, that is your image. And so in this particular situation here, when we're more than two focal lengths away, okay, the object is inverted, it's smaller, and it's real. Okay. Now let's move the object there to inside two focal lengths. Same banana, travels along, parallel, right through the focal point. You have another one going right through the center, straight. Okay, so what we have here now is the image is inverted, it's enlarged, and it is real as well. What we have going on here now, when the uh, candle is less than one focal length away from the lens, okay, what goes on here now? Now we can actually hit the focal point goes through and you'll see here that what's going on travels right through and they don't touch all right what's going on here oh sorry sorry i'm completely reading this wrong on my complete toilet uh, didn't seem right i apologize let's start this again as we said our object is inside one focal length <whistles> what goes on here now is you'll see the light is traveling through, parallel, goes right through the focal point. That makes more sense. And then you have the other one traveling straight through. So it's exactly the same as these ones here. Parallel, straight through the focal point. Parallel, straight through the focal point. Parallel, straight through the focal point. And the other one goes straight through. And you'll see here that these two lines do not meet. In this particular situation, backtrack, okay, and get them to meet up here, and you will see that your image appears on this side, upright, enlarged, and virtual. And you'll see that there when you, if you have a, I don't know who has a big convex mirror kicking around, but if you can figure out your focal point and you put it nice and close in there, what will happen is the image will appear on the mirror completely distorted up here. All right? And you can't take a piece of paper and get that image because it's on the surface of the mirror. And if you kind of move, the image is gone. All right? And if you move back, there it is again. So it's not a real image. All right? So... Hopefully there that uh, gives you guys uh, a bit of help. Here we have uh, this one right here. Convex lenses. And just kind of a little uh, um, shows you um, what uh, in schematically what's going on without all the uh, arrows and this and that. And so here we have a convex mirror that's far away there from the focal point. And you'll see your parallel line goes and then goes through the focal point. You have the uh, uh, light ray traveling from the same spot, going straight through the center of the lens, and where those two meet, that's your image. Okay, and you'll know that there, that this is a real image, inverted and smaller. Now, if we're uh, uh, inside two focal lengths, it's the same thing, and you'll see there that my image is inverted, okay, and it's still real. And if we move this uh, image there to inside uh, one focal length, what happens there? The image is virtual and gets bigger. And we could do the same thing there if uh, lens is there. Uh, let's go to converging. So, okay, so here is my uh, example there, number one. Okay, so uh, yeah, you could even look at this one right here. If it's outside two focal lengths, well, you just have a look right here, and there's your Im uh, there's your uh, image there. Inside, okay, right here gives you all the information there. It's actually really great. Whoever did this is just fantastic. 
And then if you bring that image into here, there you go. That's what we're looking at. And that's what we have right here. So everything is there. Um, that simulation is rocket science. It's really good. Um, we're almost done. The uh, I just want to talk about there the concave or the diverging lens. And you'll see there that the rays actually never meet. Okay. They never meet. You put an object in there. There's your normal. And they don't meet. And uh, we can have this up here. Let's go to diverging. So there's your image. Okay. And that's basically, I wouldn't, I'm not really going to go after this one because they just, uh, everything just kind of moves out. And you'll see here that there is a focal point because this is a concave. So the, you know, there is a circle here, theoretically, there's a focal point, there's your center. And the, the whole point of a focal point is that if you put a light source there, everything emanates from there okay to everywhere else so therefore if the light is all scattering from this point you're not going to get an image anywhere localized okay um what do we got here now and here's just a shot of uh concave okay and this is what happens here okay the rays spread out and never meet at a focal point okay there's your parallel line comes back all right to the focal point here and you'll see goes through here they don't touch and so what you have here is a smaller virtual upright image and it happens right here and you could do the same thing there with your simulation and you'll find the same thing okay here is a recap of lenses so if you get confused on which are, everything is right here, whether your image is real or virtual, upright or inverted, larger or smaller, it's all right here. Plus you have the simulation as well. Okay. And uh, this is the great movie there to watch. It'll show you there about light ray diagrams if I didn't make any sense at all, which happens, you know, it's all good. And um uh, if none of this there or if some of this there is bothering you stick around after we'll go through it all again and uh that's all i got there for today uh people um if you guys have any questions kick around uh i'll be around and uh that is that you guys don't have anything let me know the quiz will open there this afternoon you guys will have a week um, I'm sure it'll be open there until, uh, the start of next, uh, Tuesday, one and 12 o'clock or something like that. So, uh, if there's any issues, you guys have been great. Just keep asking because I try and anticipate things there with my brain. And you know what? You guys come in with excellent answers and everything you guys say, I take in and I incorporate. So, uh, you guys are doing awesome. Keep at it. And uh, if you guys got nothing, I got nothing. Enjoy your day. Get your stuff done. If, if something's bothering you, don't waste your time. Waste mine. Got it? Get out of here and enjoy your day. Stick around if you have any questions. Uh, the lab is due on the 19th. Yeah, that's what? Next Monday? Yeah, yeah. So the lab is due there next Monday. Don't stress out about it. Okay, I'm looking for you guys to have more fun. And uh, excellent job on your power when you guys were running up and down the stairs. Uh, I saw all of the names there of family members and friends and all that. I'm glad. If anything, uh, if a stupid lab can bring people together for whatever reason, it just makes me happy. So you guys are just doing great. Keep rocking it. Bang it out. And let me know. Stick around. If you have a question, I'm going to turn the uh, uh, video off. Uh...